Hey everybody, Tony Beers here. I got my buddy Jay. Hey. And we're gonna interview Terrence Cover and Kimberly Howard about their they're great filmmakers from the local Detroit area, making great low budget films. And we're gonna have a little conversation with them. So sure. <laughs> so um, you guys have done like a lot of films, like or, or series. The first thing I've seen you guys in is uh, Suburban Heroes. Yep. I'm both were in there. You, you all seem like a, a close knit group, you know, everybody in the Detroit area. So, how did y'all meet? Uh, actually, Kim and I got together originally on a short film called The Internet Style Guide for Debit Card Purchases. And that was the first thing we collaborated on. And she came on just as an actor. And then, uh, because of that, we were still doing Super Heroes. And we were like, hey, you'd be great for this other role. So, we brought her back. And then it what, just got from there. A month yeah, a month later, later. We were doing the same thing. And then just been stuck together since. No, is it, did you, was there any like uh, film school that you guys went to or? I went to the Motion Picture Institute in Michigan and Kim went elsewhere. Yes, I actually went to uh, Spence Howard, but I went for radio of all things, so yeah. Because I, you know, I need a degree in beating a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was, actually my class was one of the first ones to start like, when they were doing the film and stuff, so I actually didn't find out about it until it was too late. But I've always kind of had the interest in trying to just you know, perform and stuff like that, so it was, you know, putting up with uh, Terry and stuff to do that first skit, it was just, just kind of snowballed from there. Okay, and now uh, your uh, your group is called uh, Run AMC, correct? It's one of a couple of different filmmaking groups that I often work with. That's the one that does Suburban Heroes, we work on the Touring Ghostbusters, and the Internet Style Guide series. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go ahead and name all the rest of them. Well, those are all the ones with Run AMC. But I also work with uh, Silver Bowl Pictures. We did Heavy Mental and Blood Orgy and Beaver Lake. I also have worked with uh, Ryan Mead. We did Cosmos Locos, and you can't read here anymore. Uh, all of the world can't save you now, aka Frankenstein's Fatal Flying Guillotine, and a number of other films. Just a question for both of you. Um, who are your influences as filmmakers, writers, performers? Huh? Oh, of course. Yeah, for yeah, under the bus. Mm -hmm. um, like right off the top of my head, um, Guillermo del Toro, mm -hmm. for sure. Because, I mean, just the fact like that he can do, I mean, I think every movie by him that I've seen and stuff, he always includes him as like, it's monsters, there's that fantasy element and stuff. But I've cried at every movie I've ever seen of him. So, like, even actually uh, Pacific Rim, I got choked up a couple of scenes yeah. and stuff in that. So it's like the fact that he's able to kind of have that basically comic booky kind of fantasy element, but it's still so grounded and it's still so emotional. That like that really rings true and that's something that I wanna aspire to also. You know, anytime you got basically have a filmmaker that's like, hey, I wanna make movies like that guy, I think. Oh yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you uh, <laughs> well Ed Wood uh, unfortunately has been a big influence on me and George Romero are both filmmakers awesome. that I, I respect a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and you're both dressed as Ghostbusters, as we can see here Indeed. today. Indeed, yeah. And that's because of your uh, Kim's first director movie, correct? Uh, actually, the second. This is, um, my first one was called Personal Cadence. It's actually online as well. But it was a um, basically a four minute, four and a half minute short that was essentially just myself on camera. And I mean, we shot it with basically uh, my roommate as a grip and another guy running camera. And it's just me doing a voiceover. So it was like almost too simple to screw up just so I could kind of get my feet wet <laughs> and everything. But this is actually, Detroit Ghostbusters is essentially 20 minutes of me learning how to make a movie. So. Are you like a huge Ghostbusters fan? Is that what inspired you to do the fan film? or? You just um, you know, were until you made it. <laughs> Bit. <laughs> but um, kind of, really what sparked it is because, I mean, I grew up, you know, loving Ghostbusters and actually saying certain dialogue got me in trouble. I kind of say that's how I learned how to swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, saying a couple of those lines got me in trouble from time to time. But um, it was just kind of like, you know, you get older and you kind of get out of certain things or, you know, you get into other stuff. But um, when the video game came out, it kind of rekindled my love of everything Ghostbusters. So I started going online, watching other fan films, seeing people emulating their special effects. And I kind of had a problem with a lot of the fan films because it was like, 
for me personally, they weren't as funny as I felt they should. It was like at best they were either just repeating, you know, line for line stuff that happened in the movies, stuff like that. So it was kind of like, you know, and me as humble as I am, I was like, hey, I can do that. Yeah. So, well, so but when we were reviewing it, I was talking to him. He said, you know, some of the characters were like other characters and everything. And I said, well, that's why it's called a fan film. I mean, they're emulating their, you know. Yeah. And it was, that's what I told Terry, too, it was kind of like, you know, was, what I wanted him to go for is kind of have that, like, with Ray's stance, like, that kind of childlike exuberance. <laughs> we actually have a couple of, like, outtakes of him laughing where it's like, I'm like, okay, we're going to keep going, or keep rolling. Terry, we're going one more time. More energy. And he's like, are you kidding me? Like, seriously? And it's like, yeah, yeah, over the top. I, I Just think I remember going. calling him in review the hyperactive tech, tech whiz or something. Like and that's, 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 I think, actually, was. that might even be in the script, or I've used that <laughs> to describe him at some point. So, yeah, dead on. Uh, I don't know where it came from, it just popped in when I was thinking about it. it, it yeah. <laughs> so, um, tell us, where can we find you know, all your films, and, and uh, where can they buy them, and yeah. everything else? Okay, well, for me, uh, I have a YouTube channel, it's actually linked with my Google Plus account, so if you just look up Kimberly Howard, it comes up, or if you just search uh, Detroit Ghostbusters on YouTube, that comes up, and uh, that's linked to my channel, basically that's kind of the outlet of all of our film work, my film work, and everything, so. Yeah. Uh, I tend to do most of my stuff through Facebook, so just uh, search for Terrence Cooper on Facebook, or I do have a YouTube YouTube channel as well, and then we do have runamc.com, run with two ends, and you can find some heroes related stuff there. Yeah. And I'll put a link in the description, so anybody who wants to look, look for it, just click below. That's even easier. So forget everything we said and just click the links that he's got. <laughs> there you go. And well, I'm Tony Fears. I'm Jason Case. Yeah, and we'll see you next see time on the next time. <laughs>